Hey everybody, Rust Quick Electric here with a viewer showcase of a trap that was made by a user by the name of Bot Fragget, who is an avid electricity user as well as creator, showcasing a trap that is a reconstruction of a old school Rust trap in which there is a seemingly unsuspecting base that appears to have been partially graded by a pick method with metal window bars where the unsuspecting user comes into the area by hopping in if capable and they're instantly trapped within the area by a high external wall passed through in the floor which is covered up by these bear rugs. Now the modification of the trap which initially inspired by him was essentially just a simple and switch going into two door controllers with the traps. Now this can be expanded to have a RF broadcaster as well as RF pager if you happen to leave the base, which can be simply branched by using the branch at this point. And it will be used to send your pager a notification regarding somebody being within the area. So let's go ahead and turn on the trap so we can see how it works with the electricity addition. Now, as of right now, there's really no way of covering up the sound of the HBHF besides having multiple furnaces running. It's a decent alternative to just having the sound run, but you really can't hear it, as you can hear from right here. So, we're going to pretend we're an unsuspecting victim, hop into the area, and we're instantly trapped and met with a flame trap as well as multiple shotgun traps. Now, the beauty in having the high external wall build up is that there is no ability to jump. Once you come in the window, you're done. And the beauty as well is that the HBHF will not trigger while glaring into the area while placed low down. As you approach it closely, you can hear it, but there is really no way of seeing it with the furnace set up here. So we'll demonstrate that again by hopping on in. And you'll see it demonstrates that it will appear right here, but at this point you're still dead to the shotgun traps as you pop out, but most people will hop right in and come right into the point where they are unable to exit. So let's move on to the build. As we move on to the build, this is certainly a build that you want to practice on creative several times before you do it on vanilla because it is a bit costly if you mess it up. The placement of the high external wall as well as the stone foundations surrounding it are very specific in particular. I'm going to try and give you the tips that I've used while practicing and hope you guys can get it on the first try. Now when placing the first stone foundation, you want to make sure that you are in an area that is relatively flat. You can see the base over there that I've made to show the first example, but we're going to build it again here in a clean area. We're going to start with a foundation, and I am using B grade on the server, which I will set to B grade to just to save time. But when you do it in vanilla, you will obviously start with twig and have the end goal of moving this onto stone. Now when placing the first foundation, you want to make sure that it is a height that is just outside of the range of being able to be crouch jumped on top of. Some people may have more skill when crouch jumping on higher platforms, but you want it to be kind of just out of range at eye level. So if I build something about here, you'll see that this is a just barely attainable crouch jump. We're going to build that up. And now for the sake of this tutorial, I am going to use no clip. It will be a bit more difficult in vanilla because you will be having to use twig foundations and stairs, but it is 100% manageable. You're going to do a 1x3 portion here, and then you're going to follow that up with a set of walls. The reasoning behind this is that it's very difficult to place a stone high external wall directly against foundations, so we need a little bit of a buffer before we get to our window area. We're going to have this floor, and then we're going to build it up one wall and one half wall high. Once that's completed, we're going to build our second set of floor. And this is the floor at which point the window will be placed. Now we're going to need a bit more of structural integrity, so we'll run this foundation around on both sides. While not necessary on both sides, it will make the full base look appear to be a little bit more complete. We'll finish up with walls, half walls again, and repeat on the other side. Now, this could be redesigned to be an actual base with the trap at top, but as with most videos, I say I am not the best of base builders, and I'll leave that to the real professionals. We're going to finish up the second story with a window wall set, one by three, and we're going to have the floors placed behind them. 
Now in the trap video, we have the second set of floors here as well, which will be the trap designated area. So you would continue out this foundation and more, but that's up to you. So as you see, we have the framework of this base set up now. Now what we need to do is set up our high external wall. This can be a bit tricky, but as you can see that it's plenty of room to be placed all within this base. Now you may be wondering, how do you get it to the right spot? Well, that's where practice comes in and it's very key. The easiest way I've found so far is you look at the floor, you find the second floor in, and then you find the halfway point of that floor, approximately there. So you'd be looking at one, two, three, four planks deep. Now the reason that this works so well is because the placement is a bit offset and you want to make sure that it gets into the area where it's not outside the window but directly in so when they jump in they'll immediately be hit by it. So we're going to look at where we're at with the stone wall. We're going to slowly start backing it out until we're at approximately the halfway point of it. So we'll see that that's the end of our first wall or floor. We'll go one, two, three, four planks in and then it comes a bit towards you when you place so you're going to want to place approximately there. Now, with practice, you'll come to find that this becomes easier and easier. So we're going to come up here, kind of get a feel for it. We'll see as we run across this outer wall, we're not being hit at all by the top of the barb. As we jump into the trap and come in, we're immediately hit by it. So if you follow that four plank rule with the second floor, you'll find that placing it becomes easier and easier. As far as the visibility of the spikes goes, that has to do with your initial base foundation placement. As you saw, I was able to jump up there with crouch relatively easy, so just a bit higher would be a little bit better, but for sake of tutorial, that's up for you to learn on creative. The spikes themselves can be covered and hidden with bare skin rugs. As you'll see, if it were a bit higher, it would hide it in just its entirety. But for the sake of this video, there's no need to repeat that process because you can practice that and get it exactly right every time. Once you have this portion of the build done, it's just a matter of wiring up some simple electronics. In terms of simplicity, this is a rather simple base. It shouldn't be very difficult to wire, and it can be powered solely off solar panels. You're going to want to finish the rest of the build by simply continuing out the walls, and obviously the rest of the base, but for right now there's no need for that while showing some electronics. I typically have the three double door wall frames here, followed up with three doors, which we'll go ahead and add right now. One, two, three. You want to make sure that you don't lock these doors before the code and door controller is attached. So we're going to have them all outward facing because you want to have a direct shot with your traps. You could have them inward facing as well, but for me, I find that if it's only a one window access, the outward facing is nice because it gives you some added blockage in terms of them passing and hiding. We're going to continue on with the wiring, which consists of the roof having two solar panels and a large battery. Now, a lot of people have the argument as to why do you not wire it directly? and I have a great solution and answer for you. The reason being that if you were to be raided by an actual group and they were to take out your solar panels immediately, your electronics in your base have been completely destroyed, essentially. You can't do anything with the power. The power source is dead and you no longer have power. People seem to not like the batteries, but for me it seems to be a lifesaver because if they were to raid the external portion of your base and eliminate the electricity immediately, if you do not have that power backup, you will have nothing left in your base that can be triggered. So we're going to begin with the build portion of this. For the electrical wiring portion of this build, as with any, I showcase what's required. You have a HBHF sensor, two door controllers, an AND switch, two electrical branches, a switch, and I've also included the RF broadcaster as well as the RF pager. While the RF pager is not currently working with craftables within the server, I figured I'd show you how to wire it in case it is fixed in this upcoming update. I have three extra furnaces here to hide the HBHF within this trap. So let's get on to the build. Initially, we're going to be using the switch into the branch to showcase the different power availability. We have a large battery set up along with solar panels, which is giving you plenty of power to hold, and the switch will be toggleable to turn the trap on and off. We're going to have our main power cut off, which is our switch going directly into the power output of the large battery. 
You could use a small battery, but it's very unrealistic to get the power flow through you need as it only outputs 10. The large battery outputs 100 and gives you a much more stable flow through without having to use an excessive amount of branches. We're going to go outside of this door and set up our HBHF sensor. We want it close to the floor as we can hide it. And we're going to go ahead and set it up so that it is hidden from the window view with Furnas or Furni in front of it. We're going to proceed into the rest of the build, which includes the two door controllers. One being for the door on this side, which you need to pair while it is currently unlocked with a keypad. So we can add a key code lock right now, now that it's been paired. We'll go ahead and lock this with a random code. Then you're going to move on to the second door. Go ahead and pair that as well, which you know it can't be paired to the first one due to the fact that this one is already locked and it's unable to be paired with a locked door. We're going to spawn in another code lock and go ahead and lock this one as well. Moving onwards, we're going to have our first branch come right out of here. We're going to have our AND switch placed directly next. We're going to have the power out of the switch go into the electrical branch. We're going to have the branch out come into input B of our AND switch. And we're going to have the power out of our branch come down and across along the floor line into the power in of our HBHF. The more you can hide the wire, the better, obviously. We're going to have the input A of our AND switch come down and into the power out of our HBHF. The reasoning behind the AND switch is that the HBHF will only output as much power as there are people. So if one person hops in, it will only output one power, which is not nearly enough to power the two door controllers. So we have it flow into the AND switch, which has a real power source, which you can set a branch amount of 15 or so, which we'll just do five for now and then it will branch out the larger of the two power sources once triggered. We're going to use our second electrical branch above here just to showcase what can be used for the two door controllers. We're going to have it branch off across here and then we're going to have it come all the way across the doors into the first door. And then we will have the other power out come all the way across into the second door as such. Once this is all wired, you'll realize that you have to turn on the power before the HBHF will receive power and you can modify the settings on it. Normally you would want to include the others and exclude the authorized, which it's inverted for this menu. So you have it default set appropriately. For this instance, I'm going to include authorized because I want to be able to showcase with just me here. So if I shut the door, you'll see that it loses sense of me. But if I open it, it will see me and trigger both doors. In terms of setting up the decoy, we're going to have the three furnace that will be placed directly in front of the HBHF sensor. So we'll have one, two, and three. Now if we look at this from an outside perspective, you'll see that the wiring is hidden besides the solar panels, which you could hide ceiling lights inside and people would believe that it might just be a simple day-night light trigger. You're going to want to set up the trap by using ladders, making it appear that it's been an already rated base or partially rated base. You come up into it while the trap is on. There are two windows applied, but one removed, enticing people in thinking that it's been a partial raid. They'll look in as you have it built more cleanly and see nothing but bearskin rugs as well as the fern eye. You'll come in, unsuspecting, if I can make the jump, which I can't. There we go. Hop right on in, and we're trapped with the trap doors opening. You'll see it only triggers as you're within the window frame, and most people, when they want to get in and get that juicy loot, they'll go straight in and hop in, and they're trapped. That's about as far as the build goes for now. With the additions of the update as they fix the RF pager, you can do a second branch off here, which I will show. You would remove one of the door controllers, which specifically the branch out because you allow more power flow through through here. You would bring it down to here, 
and you would have the branch out, go back to your door, which will have it come right down here. And now with the second port, you can set up a broadcaster. The use of this broadcaster is, is that while it receives power through the HBHF output from the AND switch, you give it a power source here. You set a frequency to whatever you'd want. And then with the pager, you would set the frequency to 1231 as you did with the broadcaster. As that trap is triggered, the alarm would be going off in your inventory, but there's currently a glitch that crafted and spawned pagers do not give you the option to set frequency and choose the silent on off. This should be fixed soon, but with this setup, you will have the availability of being away from your base, but also knowing that somebody has arrived. As with any video, I welcome you all to join the Discord and now our new server, and I'm happy to answer any questions and help you out on the server when I can. Thank you!